talk about the cutting foul. So this is cutting the track. Um, and the rule 6.2.4 says cutting is gaining relative position on another skater while skating out of bounds or with one skate out of bounds. All right, so as a reminder, if we're on the track, if all of my wheels are on the line, I am in bounds. And if a portion of my wheels or all of my wheels are, are over the line, I am straddling, which is out of bounds. Okay, so this is out of bounds, this is in bounds, this is cut it pretty far close. <laughs> okay. um, so then let's talk about how to yield that. So this is way down at 6.4.2, 6.6. .6. Uh, if any skater fouls by cutting the track, they may remedy the foul by returning by the infield or the outfield to the place where they exited the track to resume game play. So this is another example of returning to the scene of the crime, right? So if I'm skating over here, I've got a bunch of speed, and someone knocks me out of bounds, and I do one of these big old things, I have to come back here where I left the track, and then resume game play, okay? So um, once again, for those who are by track shul and play <laughs> short track or flat track, um, if you, in flat track roller derby, you have to return behind the person who hit you out. In short track roller derby, they're dead to you. You don't care where they go. <laughs> if they don't carry on, that's your, their problem. So do not worry about the person who knocked you out of bounds. Do not worry about where the pack is. Like let's say the pack was in front of me, and I like tripped and fell and I came out of bounds, whatever. And then the pack has moved back because something happened with the other jammer. Like it doesn't matter. I, I still, I, I only have to come in where I left the track. Now, that's getting complicated because if I was a jammer, I wouldn't have completed a pass of all the people, but just come back to that. Um, so, jammers. Sometimes, right, with our yielding rules, it's a different rule for what a jammer has to do than what a, a blocker has to do. In this case, it's pretty much the same for everyone. You leave the track, you return to the spot where you left the track to continue playing. Um, I've seen some interesting stuff. Um, like over here at the, um, at the corner, I saw a skater jammer and you cut the track let's say you're cutting across the infield there you're cutting it close on the inside line and then you shot past everybody and you're like oh sweet I got my point but you actually cut and the official is giving you a blue four yield they don't have to give you the hand signal but that's the hand signal um, what are your options So you can return to the scene of the crime and come back through and, and then continue your pass legally. Or you can decline the point by making eye contact, sexy eye contact with your official and saying, and no thank you, <laughs> right? But you gave up the point that you worked so hard to get all, through all those people to get. But sometimes if you've careened and you're like halfway across the track before you heard the ref's call, etc., you may just choose to cut your losses and carry on. Questions? We're going to practice, oh, yeah, sorry. Good question. If it's strategic to return farther back, yeah, that's no problem. I see skaters, like, because they don't want to mess stuff up or because they just want to have, like, a fresh, clean run at the back of the pack or something, they just come in behind the pack and or because people are used to that from flat track, that, that's fine. Um, if you want to make someone cut the track, the best places to do it are in these little sweet spots. Let me like rotate the little guy. So if the jammer is trying to come along and sneak it up the inside, um, a really sexy place to hit them out of bounds and make them cut the track is right around here. Because if they've got any speed, they're gonna like right come through the inside. Um, and then anytime you can do towards the outside here. If I've got someone, all I have to do is keep my momentum going straight. And if I hit this person, they're kind of going off into kingdom come here, right? So the turns are good. 
good places to um, create a cut situation on an opposing player so that they're forced to stop and, you know, disengage. Anything to add? Yeah. Uh, I think I see a lot of Right, like a yield that makes sense. If you did this and then you did that in front of the jammer, then you would call. It's not going to be like, no, you didn't yield right. 
closed. Yeah, there's a skating out of bounds penalty, and yeah, you can't gain speed from out of bounds. So yeah, good point. Let's say I cut, and then I was trying to do something for my jammer, and now the other team's jammers come coming, and I'm like coming back to the scene of my crime, and the other jammers are saying, I can't be like, awesome, smash. <laughs> right? I have, to, I, I have to step onto the track before I say, awesome, let's go smash. Yeah. So I have to gain all my acceleration while my, my, I'm in bounds. Yeah, that's the question. Um, one thing that I want you all to be aware of, like with, as you're practicing your skills and your footwork, is that what we see a lot with newer skaters and with tired skaters is we get hit out of bounds and then we're like, oh god. <laughs> and then it's just like a long way <laughs> to get back, right? So, but ideally, ideally, if I get mashed to the inside, like ideally, I want to be able to a lot more agile and quick about it. So that's why we're practicing our turnaround toe stops and our toe stop agility and being able to turn both ways so that I'm always turning to see where, what's happening on the track to come back in, right? We're trying to avoid this one. The other thing with having a slow Try the outside. Good. Oh. Nice. 